thought it was gonna be like, guess this isn't Breaking Bad. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. And welcome to the fourth official episode of Does It Matter? Where I test fishing trends and equipment and see if the things the pros say are actually true. Today we're testing the wide gap hook and after polling my Instagram followers, we've got five brands of hooks. So let's take a look at them. So my Instagram followers wanted to see me test wide gap hooks. And these are all size three out wide gap hooks. After polling my followers, these are the brands they selected. They all vary in price slightly. I'll cover that at the end of the video. But we've got Berkeley Fusion, Owner Haymaker, Trocar, Mustad, and Gamakatsu Wide Gap 3 aught hooks. So let's see what we're gonna do. So in this episode, we're gonna be running three different tests. We've got the corrosion test, the bend test, and the sharpness test. Let's take a look at how we're gonna do each of those. So for the corrosion test, I wanted to dissolve the hook in a corrosive acid, which you can actually just buy on Amazon, which that's pretty cool. So I bought this hydrochloric acid on Amazon for $20. I then made a 20% acid, 80% water solution, and I tried to dissolve the hooks in that solution. As you can see, when I dropped the hook in, nothing happened. I think I'm gonna be here for a while. Straight acid? Yeah, straight acid. Even after using straight acid, the hooks would not dissolve until I sanded the protective coating off the outside. At that point, after sanding, I removed too much material for this to really be consistent. So at this point, it's just experimental. I'm gonna cancel my stopwatch. I think this is gonna take a long time to dissolve. I guess we'll see how long it takes this one. Moving on to the sharpness test. So what we did here was we marked a spot on this slide hammer with some tape so our drops would be consistent each round. We lifted the weight, put it at the mark. We dropped the slide weight so it would land on the hook. The hook point would then go into the material a certain distance and we would measure that distance. We actually tried this with a few different materials. We had wood, which was too hard. We had plexiglass, which was also too hard. We tried vinyl tiles that my friend had at his house. Those were too hard. And we finally landed on note cards. Every one of these note cards is seven thousandths of an inch thick. So we'll drop the slide hammer onto the note cards and measure the distance that the hook point penetrates the stack of note cards. In order to measure that, we've got a caliper that we'll use to measure it to the nearest thousandth of an inch. And that should give us hopefully some pretty accurate data on the sharpness of these hooks. So we got test number one, Mustad EWG. Ready? Okay, did not go through this one. Okay. The point one five one? Yeah, point one five one. Another freshie. You straight up and down up there? Yeah. Alright, ready? Drop. Perfect. Nice. Did not go through this one. Point one four two. Here's trial three of uh mustad. Okay, ready? Yep. Drop. Nicely done. Master level at this. 0 0.169. 0 0.169. Trial one, Berkeley Fusion. Okay, ready? Yep. Drop. Nice. Nice. Like clockwork now. Okay, right there. Ooh, more. Yeah? Guy's getting fired up. 0 0.190 thousandths. 30% more than must add. Let's grab a freshie for the next one. Okay, ready? Yep. Drop. Nice. Not through this one. 0.175 inches. Trial three. Ready? Yep. Drop. That was a really good one too. Well, I got 0 0.207 inches. Wow. Sweet. Trocar test number one. Okay. Ready? Yep. Drop. How's that one? Not as much as the other one. 0 0.172 inches. Not bad. But like buried a lot better in there. Head engineer said it's tough to get out. It was noticeably harder to get out of the note cards. Absolutely. That's good data. Ready? Yep. Drop. Just got through this one. <laughs> the same thing? Pretty close. 0 0.171 inches. <laughs> Is it the same one? Last one was 0.172. Now look at this. It's like buried in there. I can hardly get the thing out of the paper. So maybe depth isn't important. Maybe it's the barb stuff. Well, 
That fish ain't getting away. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ready? Yep. Drop. Berkeley smoked them <laughs> so far. All right. <laughs> 0.170. Maybe the barb forces that one to stop, like right in the sweet spot. Yeah, possible. I mean, those are all, those are within two thousandths of an inch. Troll car's done. So we got the owner haymaker, the most voted for hook on my Instagram poll, also the coolest name. Haymaker? Come on. Yeah, ready? Yep. Drop. Wow, that's gonna be a high one. Owner. 0 0.230 inches. Highest one so far. Ready? Yep. Drop. Clean it up. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's the exact same. No way. Yep. 0 0.230 inches. Ready? Yep. Drop. 0 0.230? Whoops. <laughs> 0 0.228 inches. Wow. All right, last hook. The second most popular vote getter on my Instagram poll, Gamakatsu. Ready? Yep. Drop. Point one eight six inches. Solid. All right, we got trial number two, Gamakatsu. Ready? Yep. Drop. Count it. Point two two three inches. Solid. Third highest. All right, we got the final uh, sharpness test of the day, Gamakatsu trial three. Ready? Yep. Drop. 197. 197. All done with the sharpness test. Yeah, that'd be pretty good data. Yeah, dude. All right, guys, that concludes the sharpness tests. I'll have the results in a chart at the end of the video. One thing I want to also mention that is kind of hard to measure, but as my friend was removing the hooks from the note cards, he said that some were harder to remove from the note cards than others. The hardest hook to remove was the trocar hook. That could be because of its famously beveled tip, and it did not score the highest on the sharpness test, so it's something worth mentioning. That's kind of just a feel thing. There's no numbers that I can put to it but it's worth mentioning. Let's move on to the bend test. So I went through a few ideas with this bend test and it's kind of difficult to test, but I ended up with the strategy of clamping the hook eye to the table. All these hooks have an offset eye. So that was my attempt to be consistent. I'll put the hook point facing up and then I will suspend a bucket over it. I'm then going to add water similar to my previous tests until the hook either bends until it's not useful or snaps completely. I will then weigh the bucket and record that weight, and hopefully we'll have the winner for which hook is the strongest. We're gonna start with the trocar hook. They respect you and give you six in a package, so we have the most of those. It's pretty much straightened here. Five pounds. Here's trial number two, Ben test for trocar. I would consider that unusable. Seven pounds. All right, here's trial number one with owner haymaker. So that hook actually snapped at 6.5 pounds. Time to get the safety glasses. Here's trial number two with the owner hook. Snapped again, 6.7 pounds. So here's trial number one with Gamakatsu. I just put the bucket on it and it broke. Let's do another one. Here's trial number two with Gamakatsu. The first trial, the hook broke with just the weight of the bucket, which is 2.8 pounds. Good. Snapped. 3.75. Interesting. Okay, here's trial number one for Berkeley Fusion. We got a bender. 8.2 pounds. And see these hooks that just bend are still usable. Trial number two for Berkeley Fusion, the hook seems to be a bender.
8.55. All right, here's Mustad trial one. Let's see what we got. So I would consider that bent right here, 11 pounds. And let's just see if we can snap it. All right, Mustad. So as you can see, Mustad is definitely a bender. It took this whole bucket of water, which and is still almost usable. All right, here's trial number two with Mustad. Trial number one, it bent at 11 pounds and then I couldn't even get it to break with 40 pounds. So it's bent, 11.65. See if we can get it to break again. Wow. So it's holding the entire weight of the bucket. Very interesting. And again, still almost usable. So a pretty interesting day for my first time testing hooks. I think we learned something and I think there's a lot of things that I wanna revisit in the future. It's kind of interesting. These hooks can be either what I consider a bender or a breaker. It seems like once I started putting weight on them, they either were flexible or they just would snap completely. The hooks that performed worse in the sharpness test were all benders. And the two hooks that performed relatively the best, both were breakers. Here's a chart with today's results as well as some stats on these hooks. So here's the chart with all of our hooks you can see displayed at the top, Mustad, Berkeley Fusion, Trocar, Owner, and Gamakatsu. At the top, I've listed their price. You can see, for example, Mustad was five hooks for $3.99, Berkeley Fusion was six for $4.99, and so on. The cheapest were Mustad and Gamakatsu. Owner was the most expensive. There's not much difference in price between the hooks, obviously, but I think it's worth noting that the owner is the most expensive. I also masked each hook on a scientific balance to the nearest thousandth of a gram. I wanted to see if there was a correlation between hook mass and strength, but after the experiment, I don't think that there was. Gamakatsu was the lightest hook and Mustad was actually the heaviest. Then we've got our sharpness test results, which I'm really happy with. For the most part, each hook performed pretty consistently, especially Trocar and Owner with their trials being within two thousandths of an inch. I also highlighted the highest sharpness test result, which was from owner at 0 0.230 thousandths of an inch, which it actually did twice. Then we've got the sharpness test average results. You can see that owner won that category by a significant amount, followed by Gamakatsu, which would make owner the sharpest hook. The next line where I've got bend or break, this is just what I made up during this experiment. Each of these hooks, I think, when it is placed under load, will either bend or it will break. Mustad, Berkeley Fusion, and Trocar all bent when I put weight on them, where Owner and Gamakatsu actually just snapped. Bend results, this is the weight that the hook either bent or broke. So Mustad, Berkeley Fusion, and Trocar, these are the weights that those hooks bended until they were not usable anymore, where Owner and Gamakatsu, these are the weights that the hooks snapped. As far as the bend or break discussion goes, in my opinion, I really think the hooks that snap and not bend are actually stronger. In the case of this experiment, we wanted to find out which hook was the most sturdy. So in this case, it would be the owner hook, which withstood the most pounds without snapping. Most add Berkeley Fusion and Trocar, they were able to withstand a lot of weight, but they would just bend and not hold their shape. So the strongest hook in this experiment would be owner. And the last thing that we kind of incidentally measured was the hook removal ability. So as my friend was removing the hooks from the note card, he noticed that some were very hard to remove and some just fell out. So the Trocar hook was actually the hardest hook to remove from the stack of note cards, meaning if that hook was in a fish's mouth, it would be significantly hard to remove, followed by the owner and the Gamakatsu. He said that the Berkeley Fusion hook was not that hard to remove, and he actually said the Mustad hook fell right out of the note cards. So based on these results, I think we have enough information to declare a winner. So the winner goes to the owner Haymaker. I think if you're already using any these hooks and you like them, I would stick with what works for you. This is just my way of collecting some data. So that's it guys. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Does It Matter? If there's any fishing equipment that you want to see me test, leave it in the comments below and maybe you'll see it in a test in the future. Thanks for watching guys.